to Inspire Network interview. Today's interview is with Lorna Stewart. Welcome, Lorna. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's lovely to have you here. Lorna is a multi award winning entrepreneur and is currently the CEO and director of the Renaissance Organisation. She has six fantastic award winning projects under her belt, and her clients include the Jamaican High Commission, Nigerian High Commission, and also Trinidad and Tobago High Commission. So she is a fantastic person to kick off our Two Inspire Network interviews with. So hello again. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me a little bit about yourself and what you've been doing over the last 12 months. The last 12 months have been incredibly busy. And again, I'm working with high commissions. And last year, around this time, I was doing the expo for three separate high commissions, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago and as well Jamaica. So it was literally getting an audience into the High Commission and talking to them about trade opportunities with all of the Caribbean islands and it was bringing the diaspora into a kind of better feel and understanding of what it is to trade abroad. Fantastic. So could you also tell me a little bit more about the Lumina Stewart at a younger age? I know there's a lot there that you'd like to tell us about. Um, I started my entrepreneurial journey when I was seven years of age and um, I am actually the youngest of four children. So I always looked at my brothers and my, my two older brothers and my sister and observed how they did things. My greatest inspiration was my father who told me that I could actually do anything. I could be anything that I wanted to if I put my mind to it. So observing my brothers and always seeking opportunities, I would see they would go to school and they had these incredible football cards when I was younger. And they had the faces of them of players and people would actually literally swap these cards at school. And I'd sit and I'd observe my brother swapping the cards and thinking, why are they swapping the cards? Why are they not selling them? Why are they not looking at the ones like Jack Pelle and all of the ones with the high faces on them that you know, were marketable? I would actually sell those ones. And so I'd go to school and with my brother's friends, I would literally stand there and say, well, if you want this one, it's going to cost you 20 pence or 50 pence. Um, the amount of pocket money I racked up in that time was absolutely incredible. And um, I ran that enterprise for a long time until I got caught by the school. Um, the headmaster wasn't too impressed. He called my father down to school and told my dad that I was trading on, um, on school premises. And my dad laughed. He said, really? <laughs> Incredible. From that point, he went out and he bought me books on enterprise and literally said, I'm going to develop your mind so that you can become everything you want to be. So, Lorna, how would you say those experiences at a younger age have shaped the kind of person you are in business and personally today? The easiest way that I can answer that is that I have a passion for community, community development. I have an appreciation for the growth of young people. I have an appreciation for people who want to chase their dreams. And I have an appreciation of that because I've known the hard road to get there doing that. So what I do is I share my knowledge, I share my wisdom, so that the mistakes that I made along the way, others don't have to make those mistakes, unless they choose to. So, the journey to inspire others, I'd like to just know a bit more about Renaissance and how that became established and how you got that started. Renaissance started in 2005 and Renaissance was my very first contract. Now, the way that contract came about was quite incredible. Um, I'd actually been working as a temp for a while and working with um, a major hospital, NHS Trust, and they called all of the temps together and said, I'm really sorry. But as of tomorrow, that will be your last day, everyone has to go. And there was about 80 or 90 of us there. And you could hear people shouting and screaming and getting upset. And I stopped and I thought, wow, this is an opportunity for me. Um, again, being entrepreneurial, while everyone was getting upset and wound up, I went over to the guy who were announcing to us that everyone was going to be laid off. And I said, well, thank you very much. I really appreciated the time that I've spent here. They asked me what I was planning on doing next. And I said, well, I'm going to set up my own business, and that business will consult NHS Trust on how to develop their services, develop their staffs, how to develop their interpersonal skills with dealing with issues such as redundancy. And, um, and that was it. We had a really extensive conversation. And then I went back to my desk, 
literally to clear the desk out because I knew that the following day would be the last. And then I got a phone call from them saying, uh, so how soon can you set your business up? Do you think you can have it set up by Monday? And I thought, oh, this is going to be a really sharp learning curve. So very quickly I said, yeah, I'm sure I can. Now this was a Thursday. So the next day I took off knowing that I'd lose money. Um, and I spent the weekend trying to get a business set up and running. And then on the Monday I put into that business um, earning about £500 a week after tax. And delivering consultancy services to Bromley NHS Trust. Now that's quite a story, isn't it? it's amazing. I'd just like to ask, how do you think resilience plays a part in what you do and confidence as well? How do you think that plays a part? I'm one of the most confident people that I know. I must say that. And I say that outwardly. Inwardly, I get jitters just like everyone else. Inwardly, I get nervous just like everyone else. Inwardly, I don't know all the answers. But what makes me confident and makes, makes me exhume confidence is that when I don't know, I say I don't know. Um, and then I say, but I'm going to find out. If I don't think I can do something or achieve something at a particular time, I'm happy to say to people, this is a learning curve for me, I'll go away and try. And I think the confidence to be honest about what you can and cannot do at a particular moment in time is what gets people's respect. And that is the, always a good starting point. How did you find it last time? Initially, it was up in the air, it was, oh my gosh, there's so much to do, there's not enough hours in the day, do I need to work a 25 hour day, do I need to, it was so much. And then when my son, oh my gosh, amazing young man, sat down and said, well, you know what mum, you know when I go to school I have a timetable, and I have to write what I do in the morning and what I do later in the day, and I run my life by that timetable mum. And he said, why don't you try that? And I sat and looked at this young, intelligent individual thinking, hmm, that isn't going to work for me. And he said, well, you know, Mom, you always say sometimes innocence in youth and intelligence in youth, give it a try. So I tried it, and now I have the most amazing work-life balance that I've enjoyed for years. So what were some of the challenges you faced in this new professional environment? Um, having worked in a lot of corporate enterprises, um, the challenges that I faced was looking at life no longer from the point and the perspective of being an employee, but now operating as an employer. Um, one of the things that I was always taught is that when you are an employer, you need to be the captain of your ship. So that means developing some serious skills, which were leadership skills, management skills, self-management skills. And on those days where you want to lie in bed, you can't lie in bed. <laughs> on those days, where you want to do absolutely nothing, you can't do absolutely nothing. If your timetable and your program says you need to be here and you need to do this, then you actually have to get up and do it. So you can imagine that you've got to crack the whip with yourself to keep yourself motivated and going. And as someone who's always been able to self-motivate, it's been quite easy for me to manage that. Um, to motivate others, that's been the work in terms of building the team and getting the right people on. What would you say are some of the traits of a leader? <laughs> it's, 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 you've hit on something there. A lot of people think it's the person who speaks the loudest, shouts the loudest, has the most to say. Leadership qualities are about patience, understanding, respect, tolerance, integrity, and the clear understanding that you need to manage and you need to lead from the front, as well as walk side by side with your staff, and at time you need to get behind them and give them that little bit of a push. Those are the traits of someone who's a good leader. They're not responsive in terms of, they don't react to situations, they don't rush around trying to solve a problem. They actually take the time to look at it and be part of the solution. In your opinion, what do you think of the opportunities available to young people today in terms of arts, business and education? The challenges that face young people today are very much focused on gaining meaningful employment, um, gaining the academic grades that they need, getting access to opportunities such as university. For many young people, that is very far away now that there's new legislation that's, that talks about how much it costs to go to university. Um, if you're not at the high end and capable of affording those fees, then that's something that's going to really create issues for young people. So I think that their challenges of getting into business, enterprise and development are really going to be very much based 
based on how, re how much they really want that and creating opportunities for them, real and genuine opportunities. Now, I don't want to speak in a way that's vague, so I can be really precise. Um, if a young person sets up enterprise, supporting them to find a way to make their own money, to make their own living in an environment that doesn't offer them a job, is probably their best way forward. So I place a lot of emphasis on enterprise and creativity. And that's whether someone comes from the creative arts or whether they're academics, it's always going to be, what do you want? Dream big, big, hairy, amazing, gigantic dreams. And I work with them to actually bring those dreams to life.
to inspirenetwork.com. Thank you. Thank you.